Hi, I'm Mark Neal from HDRForReal.com. Today I'd like to demonstrate how I use the Adobe Photoshop Adaptive White Angle tool to correct white angle distortion. As you can see in this image, there are no true verticals, and just about every line has a curve caused by lens distortion. So to start, I'll right click on the background layer to create a new layer. This will allow me to preserve the original for comparison. Since my purpose is to make this scene more realistic, I think I'll name this layer Back to Reality. Next, I'll select File Adaptive Wide Angle. This brings up a new display with a few very powerful functions. I'll select the Constraint tool shown here. I'll start by straightening the diagonals to get a cleaner vanishing point perspective, basically lining up the top and bottom edges of the trailers. Watch the magic. Now I'll work on a few verticals to get a more realistic visual of the image. A right click on the bottom of the line gives me a choice of line angles. I want this line to be my true vertical. I'll jump to the second trailer and adjust the verticals but leave a very slight inward lean. I've found that a somewhat unnatural upper widening happens when all of the verticals are perfect. By grabbing the upper or lower blocks of the circle, an almost infinite adjustment is possible. If you look closely, you can see that all of these adjustments have eliminated the nice straight horizon that I started with. So I'll click at the left side and pull my line to the right and drop it where I want my true horizon to be. The horizon is a little crooked now, so I'll right click and select horizontal to get a perfect angle. The image looks pretty good now, but I've sacrificed too much foreground at the 20 millimeter focal length. To eliminate some of the wide angle distortion, I'll change the focal length to 50 millimeters. This looks really nice now, but the vertical line at the front of the trailer has suddenly done a tilting act. So, by applying a true vertical, the scene is complete. Now that I've finished the adjustments, I'll click OK and complete this session with some final cleanup steps. With both layers on, the image looks good at first. But what about those ugly overlapped areas on the right? By turning the background layer off, I can clearly see what needs to be fixed. My first step is to select the Crop tool. And starting at the upper right hand corner, I'll mouse down to the best selection. My last cleanup step is to use the spot healing brush on the lower right. This is another one of those magic tools in Photoshop. Just a little more cleanup. And here's the finished image. Now I'll compare this with the starting image. The difference is very noticeable. I know the extremely distorted look is popular, and I sometimes enjoy leaving it in. But for this image, I prefer the back to reality version. Again, this is Mark Neal from HDRForReal.com.